endoscopic submucosal dissection of cecal lesions in proximity to the appendiceal orifice. This is a retrospective analysis of endoscopic submucosal dissection of target lesions that are located in the cecum in proximity to the appendiceal orifice. We studied this group of patients to see if ESD could adequately treat them in an efficacious and safe manner. In addition, we wanted to examine which ESD strategies should be applied and when to apply those strategies based on the anatomical variability of the target lesion in proximity to the appendiceal orifice. We created a classification system to address the variability of the target lesions with respect to the appendiceal orifice. This classification system allowed a more structured approach to matching the ESD strategy and outcomes with the different anatomical configurations that were treated by ESD. The classification system consists of the following. Type 0 lesion. This is where the target lesion is in proximity to the appendiceal orifice. However, the entire circumference of the appendiceal orifice retains a rim of normal tissue. Type 1. The target lesion reaches the border of the appendix but does not enter the appendiceal orifice. Type 2. The target lesion reaches the appendiceal orifice and enters the appendiceal orifice. In type 2 lesions, the transition from target lesion to the normal appendiceal mucosa is discernible on careful inspection into the appendiceal lumen. Type 3. The target lesion reaches the appendiceal orifice and enters the appendiceal orifice deeply such that the transition between the target lesion and normal mucosa cannot be seen. ESD was not performed for type 3 lesions unless there was a prior appendectomy because it was anticipated that ESD in the face of an intact appendix would have a high risk of incomplete resection. The outcome of this study showed that cecal lesions in proximity to the appendiceal orifice could be successfully resected using one of two strategies depending on the type of lesion being treated. Detailed descriptions of both strategies are described in the article. Of the 76 patients included in this review, there were 47 type 0, 20 type 1, 6 type 2, and three type 3 lesions. The on-block resection rate was 94.7% with a complete resection rate of 92.1%. The curative resection rate was 89.5%. Three adverse events were experienced. One patient with a type 1 lesion had delayed bleeding treated with endoscopic hemostasis. A second patient with a type 1 lesion who developed perforation during ESD and underwent clip closure near the base of the appendix complained of abdominal pain three months post-ESD and was diagnosed with acute appendicitis. He was treated with emergent ileocecal resection and recovered fully. One patient with a type 2 lesion developed abdominal pain 10 weeks post-ESD and was diagnosed with appendicitis. After a course of antibiotics, she underwent elective appendectomy and made a full recovery. In conclusion, in this first report of ESD outcomes for lesions in proximity to the appendiceal orifice, we have analyzed and classified these lesions in the hopes of giving the endoscopist a structured approach to treating these patients with ESD. In addition, we have shown that aside from type 3 lesions with an intact appendix, all lesions can be treated with ESD as post-ESD appendicitis appears to be uncommon. In the future, we will continue to accumulate data in this group of patients so we can learn more about them and continue to develop the endoscopic approach to them. 
Thank you, and we hope you enjoy reading the article.